Hey, this is Matt once again with the Back to the Video. And this is a paid request for Albin. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I do have a Cash App because people have asked about that as well. Uh, just make sure if you send through PayPal, make sure it's the family and friends option. Because if you don't, then PayPal will take a cut out of it. But it could be for any topic, reaction, review, re-review, ranking, tier list, commentary, reaction, video game playthrough. Whatever the case may be, and I'll get to as soon as I can. For those who sent them, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is for Gator, the 1976 film starring Burt Reynolds. And it's the, film, the first film he directed as well. I read up somewhere that he said the script for this sucked, but then when they told him, you'll get to direct. Oh, it's the best script ever. <laughs> now, it's definitely not the best script ever, but I would say I liked it. In fact, I know this don't come as a very derisive comment, but I actually like this more than White Lightning. White Lightning, I wasn't gun ho about. Yeah, I didn't hate it, but just, I don't know. Just... This one, I probably liked it a bit more because of the the seeds the elements here that you see our precursor to next year's film Smokey and the Bandit because again this was 76 that was 1977 and blew the doors off to a lot of films that ripped off Smokey and the Bandit that really catapulted Beretto's career even further upward and onward and I really do quite like Smokey and the Bandit so it was kind of interesting to see those similar elements in this film, which I believe this film was a hit, which helped him get Smokey and the Bandit. Because in this film you got uh, Jerry Reed, who of course would be in Smokey and the Bandit. He plays the villain, which I thought was better than White Lightning. Because Ned Beatty I like, but at times it felt like he barely appeared. He was. It felt like sometimes he was barely in the film. I know it may seem like dumb, but here I definitely felt more Jerry Reed's presence, and it was cool to see him as a bad guy, a charming bad guy, but he could be evil when he needed to be. So that was a nice change of pace for to see from Jerry Reed, who, who I do like. And you do get a song from him at the beginning of the film. And you, this is the bird with the mustache, and he's got that laugh. <laughs> yeah. Those elements creeping up, which we will see later, much more in Smokey and the Bandit. You have some good, couple of good stunt sequences. You have this boat chase among the bayou, where he's going through cops' boats and going off of piers while the cops, their boat is going through shacks. Uh, you have... Once in a while, a little bit of fisted cuff here and there. Not a whole lot, but you have... Definitely a bit between Bert and Jerry Reed at the end of the film. I will say the pacing of it is a bit iffy. Sorry for my hesitance there. I'm like, oh, should I bring it up? But yeah, why not? I, I don't think it needed to be almost two hours long. So it felt a bit lagging in certain points of the movie. And maybe because Bert, this is his first film directing. I think he could have made a bit of a tighter picture. I don't think all the comedy works for the film. There's definitely seems like a couple tonal shifts throughout the picture. But I know Bert would continue to direct a couple other films. He did a film called The End. Sharky's Machine, which is kind of his answer to Clint Eastwood's. I don't know if this is true, but I remember reading that when Every Which Way Belus came out, Bert is like, oh, Clint, you don't go on my territory? Okay, well, I'm going to go on your territory. I'm going to make a cop movie, and it's called Sharky's Machine. Yeah, I don't know if that's the truth, but I know they were pretty close friends, and <clears throat> seems like something they would do. But, okay, before I go on the plot of the film... This federal agent played by Jack Weston, which I recognize the guy, he played the bad guy Oscar 
in Short Circuit 2. He was a guy, Johnny Five was adamant to capture. I need a hero while that song's playing. I'll go for you, Oscar. I don't know why I made him sound like Booker T and WCW. We're going for you, dude. <laughs> but I don't think he fit in this. I did not like his performance in this. Just at times he sounded like Joe Besser from the Three Stooges, like whiny. And I think if it was someone like M.M. Walsh. M.M. Walsh was a character actor. He would be in Miss It in Action, Critters. He was the top in Critters. He was the guy helping Chuck Norris and driving the boat in the third act in Miss It in Action. He was in Red Scorpion as the American who sees, uh, you know, Dolph Lundgren's character. He did a lot of stuff. And I think if he was in this film as a character, that would have worked up better. He was the, the boss and the... Chief the Cop in Blade Runner. So if they got someone like that, it would have worked a bit better. Jack Weston, again, he just seemed too whiny. He just seemed to... I, I don't know why. He just kept making you think he was going to be Joel Besser. <laughs> but apparently in this state, there's this one county causing trouble for a person that wants to go further in the political ladder. So Jack West is a federal wager that comes in and goes, I have an idea. The guy you have an issue with is Jerry Reed. Someone who's buddies with him was Gator, played by Burr Reynolds. The guy's been to jail twice. If we hook him on something for a third time, he'll cooperate with us. Which, honestly, that doesn't even come to play. It's more, if you don't do it, we're going to arrest your dad. So that's why Bert does it. After they try to take him and then he goes on this boat and it's a pretty decent action sequence. Although there are times that this movie is a bit drawn out in certain bits and that's what I mean by the tighter pacing. Like even during the scene there are points where the there's one cop going Hey, you know where that guy is yet? No, I haven't seen that guy anywhere around here. Now, what do you think, man? Like, they're very talking, very drawn-out accidents. And that happens from time to time. Like, there's a bit where Jerry Reed, who, it, he was a fun villain. He was charming, he's smiling. You know, you can see why people would like him, but then he'd have this evil glance where he'd go in this club because he's clutching and, and money. And, like, the two bouncers, one, he's, like, charming. Oh, hey, you tired, huh? And the guy's, like, got a glass bottle here. Oh, it's hot, huh? Yeah, it's pretty hot. So Jerry punches right here through the glass and hits the guy in the face. And there's another guy he throws and the guy goes through the window. Then he warns the guy and the guy says the wrong thing. Then the next thing you know, the place is on fire. But like that scene, I'll cut to like two cops, which I've never seen them before, will never see them again, just talking, hey, I'm on my lunch break, or whatever the hell they said, and then I'll cut to like a place on fire, and then some woman just kind of being bored, or, hmm. and then the scene <laughs> like transitions to Burr Reynolds and whatever they're doing, so it just... I feel like a weird edit, like on bits like that. Oh, there's a bit at the end where he's fighting the bad guy, and uh, well, I guess is spoilers. I'll wait to the bit of spoilers, but I try to remember that. But yeah, there's, there's a bit that sometimes shots go on for seems like a bit too long. Maybe just one of those. Yeah, you live and learn. Is his first time directing? Sometimes if you make mistakes like that. But yeah, I like Burt Reynolds in this because it's, it's more of the Burt that I, I'm more used to. 
because the Burr I think of is Hooper, which is my favorite of his, Smoking the Bandit. And that bird is more like the bird in this compared to White Lightning. Now, I'm sure that's the reason perhaps why people like White Lightning more, but I didn't grow with that era. I didn't grow with those, like, the Burt Reynolds I like and grew up more was similar to this and, and other films. So the way Burt, although I will admit, and this one, Burt at times seems a little bit tired. At times a little bit too low energy. But in some moments, he's fine. Like overall, I like him in the movie, but... Jared Reed definitely stole the show. I thought he was a very fun bad guy. Like, there's a bit where after Burt gets settled and sees his old friend, and the guy takes him around, shows him the ropes. He has his gun. There's like a two-barrel gun. What's that for? Well... I want to see some blacks... Now, one day they can be real easy, but the next day they can be real bad. This, make sure they try to take it easy. And there's like a little fight, little action bit, and then he shoots the tires off. And he goes up and he's smiling, hey buddy, you got my $500? And the guy's like, oh sure man, here you go. And they're both like laughing and it's like you're not quite sure what's going to happen next but at the same time it's like this weird kind of charm to it. It almost seemed like Burr Reynolds was kind of laughing and smiling like yep I got the tape here. <laughs> this is the tape I'm going to use. Or there's another bit where Jerry Reed is talking to Burr and I thought this was some pretty nice dialogue he says about how everybody out there's a taker. You reach out, you take it, or someone's going to reach out and take you. At that whole speech he did, I thought it worked well, and let's say Jerry Reed I thought was effective, and Bert, you know, it's his friends, but at the same time he realizes that what one of the things Jerry Reed is doing is underage prostitution, including girls who are 15, and of course... Bert doesn't condone that, and that's where he realizes, okay, shit's really going south with this guy. Now, I thought a lot more was going to come into play with the whole prostitution angle. But then it's, like, completely forgotten and not really coming to play. I don't know, like, maybe those kids, Bert would try to help out, or try to get one of them to help him out in terms of getting info or getting help or getting some way to get this guy arrested, get some evidence. Nope, none of that ever comes to play. So I thought that was kind of a little bit strange. Oh, yeah, Jerry Reed has this big guy called Bones. I don't know who the actor is. I know he's passed away, but... Just one of these big guys, like Richard Teal-looking motherfuckers, the way he talks, he talks like this. I don't like what you're saying. He's making me mad. And I did, I did like this bit though, where Jerry Reed has drugged Bert. The idea being, you don't be knocked out. We don't put you in a car. You don't be at the county line. We don't. Want, I don't want to hurt you, man. You just get out of here. So, again, you have the bad guy, but he's still, there's a part of him that's loyal to his friend to an extent. I did like Burt being drugged and, like, making fun of, like, this one guy. Yeah, this one guy called Smiley. I recognize the actor. If you remember Back to the Future 3, remember the guy that gave Marty Bufly the gun? And he's like, where'd you learn that? 7-Eleven. The guy who gives him the gun, that's the guy in this movie who plays Smiley. And like Burt goes, <laughs> man, God came down and gave you nothing but hiding, gave you nothing but teeth. And when the guy's like, you're making me mad. Oh yeah, I'm making him mad. Like just the way he's mocking it, I thought that got some chuckles out of me. Uh, there, of course, there's a love story, because there's always got to be a love story. This one by, uh, I think, Lauren Hutton is her name. 
and she plays a reporter in the local area. Her and Bert fall in love. Now I thought Lauren Hutton did a decent job. She was a you know capable actress. Had a nice attitude to her. You know as she puts it, you charm the shirt right off my back as she takes the shirt off. Of course, you don't want to see any nipples and stuff, but it's funny. There's a story I, I heard about Burt Reynolds interviewed about this. He says, oh, yeah, she's a bit crazy, but, you know, I like crazy. And from time to time, I guess Lauren Hunt would flash the crew. Is anyone having a good day? Well, how about now? <laughs> Apparently, she did that. So the crew definitely liked her. But, uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. That's a good woman in my book, so I can't say too bad about a woman that's willing to flash a crew and not be canceling people for it. <laughs> so, she's, she's cool in my book. And it seemed like her and Bert worked well together. But, again, sometimes Bert seemed a bit too, not sedated, but kind of like, mm. Like he seemed much more amped up and smoked in the bandit consistently. Uh, I don't know what the deal. Maybe because again you're directing, so because you're directing doing all this stuff for the first time, then it's just it's a lot more onto yourself. So maybe it's hard to keep that energy. I would assume that was the case. It could be very much wrong. When I said all the comedy doesn't work. Okay, there's a bit where they did in these, again, this is spoilers from, spoilers. They got to in these court records. And you have this woman, I know I've seen her in stuff, I cannot remember where though. But I know I've seen her in my other movies. She worked for the court records, she got fired, she's a cat lady. But she's like, okay, I'll help you out. But I gotta bring my cats. And Bert's like, no, we're not bringing the cats. I gotta bring my cats. Fine, bring the cat. So, like, Bert is holding a cat while the others are, too, and having to go into the, the, to get the, the records and already get evidence on Jerry Reed. It's just a very goofy scene that I thought overstayed his welcome, was way too long. The whole cat thing, it's like, okay. I didn't think it was as funny as you guys did. Then they get to, along with the fiddle agent who got beat up at one point, he was in the hospital, but now he's out. They all go to the, this place by the beach. Bert and the girl have their lovey-dovey stuff while the cat lady and the agent are at the beach, at the, the house. The bad guys find where they're at. And they fucking you know, shoot Jack Weston and kill him. And then they grab the cat lady, but she... No, no, my babies. They were burning up the place. She goes back in to try to save her cats. And then she gets killed. And the place pretty much blows up. So, damn. Like, that's what I mean. That you go from oh, his goofy scene where we have these cats. And we don't bring them into the car. To now, these two people die. You know, one gets shot. And you see a little bit of, like, you see the blood on the walls and stuff. And this lady gets burnt to death. <laughs> It's a little bit of a tonal shift. So Bert comes up with a plan, says, hey, I'm at this motel, set this up, this bomb, where wannabe Richard Teal goes in, but then sets it off and the place blows up. Bert chases Jerry Reed. There's a good stunt where he's hanging off the side of the vehicle, and there's this great shot where the vehicle butts off, on its side, and I think it's Hal Needham actually. On the side, this crazy stunt where it falls and like the guy jumps and pfft. I don't know how to describe it, but it's a really good stunt. And good thing Hal Needham didn't get himself killed from that. But. But he, he has a fist fight with Jerry Reed. And this is what I was talking about uh, earlier where he had called before Bert about the, to the authorities. So a helicopter's there. 
So on the beach is like one of these stands, like uh, food stands that you know are left there until someone comes in to sell food, and has those like sliding door things. So he has Jerry Reed there, and we're like behind him, and we've seen Kurt, not Kurt, Bert. Yeah, Kurt Russell's in this too. We've seen Bert, and we've seen the helicopter. We see Bert here, we see the helicopter here. Like Bert, helicopter, Bert, helicopter. And Jerry Reed's like here, and we see the back of him, he's out of it. So he's like just staying there, Bert, and I get why. He's staying there so the helicopter did get closer. He's like, so he's like waiting there with no cuts and then he's like they puts up and he holds for too long and then he does this slams it on the guy now I don't know if that killed Jerry Reed's character or just knocked him the hell out I don't know I don't know if Jerry Reed's character is dead I guess so but the same time you could do that and just the guys knocked out the hell in high water so again i don't know if jerry Reed's character is dead i don't know if he's alive and just arrested does it go either way where i'm gonna knock him out but then those guys are gonna pick him up or i kill him and there's that but i mean i don't know and you never see the Burt Reynolds' dad and the, the girl he has. You never see them again to see if they're doing all right. Instead, he gets with the Lauren Hutton and... I think that was her name. Gets with her. She's getting a job in the city. I guess Burt realizes for some reason they can't be together. Walks away. They both kind of smile to each other. Drives off and the movie's over. But yeah, the as I would say this, I'll, I'll even though it's a bit more subdued performance, I do like Bert and this kind of you know laughing, this kind of it, it was like I said, interesting precursor to what we see from the Bandit and Smoking the Bandit. Jerry Reed, I thought was nice, touched for him playing the bad guy and a charming bad guy. Uh, that, that worked rather well. I thought that uh, when the action scenes are there, there's some decent snow work in terms of, again, the, the boat bits in the beginning of the film. Uh, the fist fight, I mean, wasn't nothing to run home about, but it was an interesting location, and like he's punching Jerry Reed, and Jerry's falling backwards throughout some of this stuff. And yeah, I thought that, uh, I'm trying to think now, the movie could have been tightened up a bit, not all the, the humor works the best, the Jack Weston, I didn't like him, I thought, he's, he, I don't think he was the right fit for this character. Yeah, Lauren Hutton. Yeah, okay, I was right. But it was a nice hit for Burr Reynolds, and it definitely led him to, you know, bigger things. I guess the way I would put it, it was a decent warm up for Smokey and the Bandit. Has his flaws, and there are scenes like that last shot where he's just waiting for the helicopter, waiting for the helicopter. Certain sh scenes are just go on a bit too long. The cat lady with the holding of the cats, I don't think that was really needed. Again, that could have been one of those prostitutes that you brought up earlier in the film. I don't think all the humor works. I would like to have seen maybe a bit more action. But like I said, there's a couple of decent, you know, there's a, let's see, the boat chase was fun. The, 
not a whole lot of action in the middle portion, to be fair. I kind of wish there was a bit more action in the middle of the film, where it kind of slogs for a bit. So I, I guess the other day I would say it's it was okay. It was okay. It still has some charm to it. That Burt Reynolds charm. Like I said, Jerry Reed being the villain definitely helped. Because I liked him more as a villain than Ned Beatty and the White Lightning. Lauren Hutton, I thought she was able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Burt. Jerry Reed saw it at the beginning, I didn't mind, but although not nearly as classic as you would see in Smoking the Bandit, among other stuff. And of course, my favorite movie is Hooper. That's my favorite Burr Reynolds movie. Love that film very much. Love Hooper. But like I said, this is kind of a nice stepping stone for Burt to enter that realm, and then Smokey and Hooper was bigger and better movies. But... It was nice to see kind of the precursor to that, which I saw as low elements sprinkled throughout. So that was that was at least intriguing to see. So overall, it was okay. It was okay. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye for now.